we tell these stories, not because they happened once, but because they are always happening. We tell these stories because we are, see ourselves in them, and the stories then give us hope for where we will end up, for how our, our own stories will end. In this particular story from St. Mark, I find myself today with the women approaching the tomb. Jesus died on a Friday in the afternoon. Now, people in that culture reckoned that the day begins at dusk, so that means that the next day, Saturday, the Sabbath day, began shortly thereafter. No work can be done on the Sabbath day, which means that in this case, these women can't go out and attend the body of their friend as they customarily would. And so as soon as they had light to see by on Sunday morning, which is to say as soon as humanly possible, they got their things together and they go to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body for burial. But did you notice how on the way there, they didn't even have a plan for actually getting into the tomb? They didn't know how they were going to get through that big rock that was rolled in the front. Who will roll away the stone for us, they said. This is not a small detail. This is a big thing. If that stone can't be rolled away, there's really no point in showing up. But they did show up. The story not only shows us the hurry with which they set out to care for Jesus, but also their determination to do so. They said, yes, there's a stone, but damn the stone. We'll figure it out when we get there. These three women had a job to do. Nobody else was going to do it for them. They didn't have a plan for how to do it, but they went to do it all the same, because if they didn't, who would? They set out that morning in the hope that a solution would present itself, in the faith that one way or another they would somehow complete their task. And that's where I am today. I am standing before a great stone, one that I cannot move on my own. I am unsure who will move it for me, but I come here hoping, trusting that it will be moved, that I will be able to do the thing that I have come here today to do, to proclaim the good news that Christ is risen. What is that stone? The stone is lots of things. The stone is a pandemic that for the second year in a row is keeping us out of our church building while it is unsafe for us to gather for worship. It is a giant, invisible boulder sitting in front of the doors to our gathering space, preventing us from entering, preventing us from sharing the joy of Easter together as we should the laughter and the camaraderie and the friendship preventing us from consoling one another in our grief as friends and family members die, preventing us from looking upon the reality that we are not just a bunch of individuals holed up in our houses, but a community, a living breathing, working, serving, loving community that is feeling the strain of not being able to see and feel one another's presence. The stone is division. It's political polarization and racial tension and hate and all the other stuff that keeps us from loving our neighbors as we ought. It's the unkind thoughts that cross my mind about my siblings in Christ when I hear the news, or the anger and the frustration I feel when I hear stories of injustices suffered or committed. It's the number of times I've said to myself, I just can't understand those people, how they could think like that, how they could believe that. The stone is stress. It's how hard I've been working for this whole year to try to keep things together, to try to keep things going, to help us feel connected across cyberspace, to make it feel as though we are still together when we can't see or hear one another. 
It's the amount of work that goes into recording and editing and coordinating and trying to maintain a connection with everybody. Work that I gladly and willingly do, but that is so, so much harder to find worthwhile when I can't even be with the people for whom I am doing it. The stone is grief. It's the loss of once I, what I once called normal. The absence of my friends, the inability to go out to dinner with my wife or even go have a beer at the brewery. It's the heaviness of more than a half million dead in this country alone. It's the pit in my gut for all of those who are more susceptible to this virus for the same reasons that they are more susceptible to violence or hunger or hatred. Because of where they live or how little they have or what color their skin happens to be. In short, my dear friends, the stone is death. The stone is, as the prophet Isaiah says, the shroud that is cast over all peoples. You see? We don't tell the story because it happened once, but because it's always happening. We have different images for describing it, different words for telling it, but it's the same story, the same thing, the same problem. I know I don't have to tell you about these things because you know them too. Life is hard. Things are tough. Now, more than most years. But that stone is especially heavy for me this week. That shroud is especially inky and black. This week, I lost one of my oldest friends to depression. And now, I have to stand here and tell you that everything's going to be peachy keen. A-OK, -okay because Christ is risen. And that's why I'm wondering today, who will roll away this stone for me? How am I going to be able to make that sound true to myself or anyone else? I share this story with you, my friends, not because my story is so much harder or sadder than yours, but because I know that your stories are just as hard, just as sad just as rotten. I share my story with you, not because it happened once to me, but because it is always happening to all of us. We all have losses and stresses and struggles that weigh us down. I don't know what you're each going through, but I know you're going through it because, frankly, we all are. Each and every one of us, at some point in our lives, looks up and wonders, who is going to roll away this damned stone? But in spite of that stone, I am here. I have a job to do. We all do. Our job this morning is to show up, to sing our hymns, to shout into the darkness that somehow, somehow, convince ourselves and one another that this is good news for us. And so, my dear friends, I ask you, who will roll away this stone for us? How are we going to be able to do what we have gathered here this morning to do? We tell these stories, my dear friends, not because they happened once, but because they are always happening. Today, we have a giant stone staring us in the face as we walk toward the tomb. We can see the stone. We can see the shroud, but it's what we can't see that's at the crux of this story. The women today, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, they could see the stone, whether it was ahead of them on the path or in their minds or in their hearts. But what they couldn't see, well, that's where the story gets interesting. 
It wasn't until they got closer that they could see that the stone was rolled off to the side just a bit, that there was a way into the tomb after all. It wasn't until they got up and inside that tomb that they saw the guy in the robe. It was that stranger who had to point out to them what they didn't see. Look, he said, the man that you're looking for, Jesus, the crucified one, he's not here. Look, that's the place where they laid him. And they looked. And what did they see? Nothing. I can't see how anyone is going to move this stone. I know I can't do it. I can't do it with my words. I can't do it with the force of my will. I can't do it by trying or praying or wishing or hoping hard enough. I know that I am not going to save this world or this country or this congregation or even myself because I know that I can't even save the last slice of pizza. I know I can't do it. And I know you can't do it. And I know that we can't even all do it together. Not even if we all put our backs into it because that stone is just too big for us to handle. But then I also know that we're not the ones who are going to move it. We tell these stories not because they happened once, but because they're always happening. The power of God is not about moving one rock or raising one man from the dead. The promise of Easter the promise of God, the promise of resurrection is that even when we can't see a way around these heavy things, God does. Friends, I am looking for a way to move this stone and I am not seeing anything. I'm looking for a way to spin all of this violence and hate and evil in the world into a way that says that things are looking up, but I'm not seeing anything. I'm looking for a way out, or maybe a way in, but I'm not seeing anything. But you know what? That's okay. That's okay because sometimes we have to show up before we can see those things. Sometimes the only thing we can do is stumble out of bed in the morning, grab our jar of spices, and hope for the best. I'm really glad that this year the story is from Mark's gospel. Because in Mark's telling, Mary and Mary and Salome didn't leave the tomb singing and dancing, did they? They left in fear and confusion, running for their lives. Sometimes that's how we come out of Easter morning. The resurrection doesn't solve all our problems. It doesn't leave us feeling happy and contented. But it does give us hope that maybe our fears and our despair and our hurts are not the end of the story. Easter gives us hope that maybe, just maybe, that stone can be rolled away after all. So I don't have any answers for you. I don't have some memeable quote that you can take and share all the, to, that will take away all the pain or the frustration or the anger. All I've got is my jar of spices and this sermon and some hope that what I said is true. That we tell these stories not because they happened once, but because they're always happening. I've seen God bring death from life before. Not just with Jesus, but all over. I've seen a pandemic paradoxically bring new life into a stagnant church. I've seen myself and others grow from our worst pain. I've seen God roll away other stones, raise other corpses. And so I showed up here today, hoping, trusting, waiting 
to see it again.